Join me this week as we talk to Martin P. Robinson and Annie Evans, a couple who've worked on Sesame Street for many years. Annie's an Emmy Award-winning writer, and Martin has played Snuffleupagus and many other characters. Their most recent project at the New Victory Theater is Annika's Elephants. Let, let's start off with your new show and why why elephants? <laughs> yeah, because because I really want to know this because I had because <laughs> I the- yeah I have heard through the Great Fry that you've had an elephant thing since at least college, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Marty didn't. Marty, I mean, Marty, you might have liked elephants, but I was the elephant girl. Elephants are fine, but uh, <laughs> you know, when you got to build them full scale, then then you're going to talking some volume here. <laughs> so, um, I uh, yes, I always loved elephants. I loved that they were a matriarchal society, and uh, I thought that was really uh, amazing. And we should learn from that. Uh, we have a matriarchal household here. Uh, <laughs> in solidarity with elephants. elephants yes, and. Uh, um, and so then I was very lucky uh, uh, many years ago uh, before I was married and had kids uh, during our Sesame hiatus, I spent a month in Kenya with Earthwatch, which is an organization where they hook you up with scientists to study or uh, whatever the scientists working on. It worked on an elephant study for um, it was three weeks in the uh, uh, area between Savo East and Savo West, the two uh, really large game parks in Southern Kenya. And we were studying the movement of elephants uh, between the parks. And uh, so I was up close and personal for many, many weeks um, studying and just recording and, you know, trying to um, have 10 elephants that were my elephants to try to see if I could recognize them and talk, you know, and write down where I saw them and things. Uh, I'm very interested right now in um, uh, animal culture and like, and the idea of like, who's to say that the human species is any more important than another species. Uh, I mean, that's why elephants were such a, fit for me with that because they their culture is so strong and their emotions are so obvious uh, you know and uh so i i'm looking for other ways for the younger generations to learn to not that you know that we're not you know we're not the end all and be all to this planet at all you know and then i was like well how can i write about them and it took me a long time and then during COVID, I had gotten a sort of thing from you know, on high, you know, when, when I was in a yoga class saying, you know, well, a little girl and an, and an orphan elephant and they're together out in the bush. And I got that sort of came to me. And so then I really outlined an idea of her story and what would be good for kids and how to educate them, but keep them, you know, but keep them entertained and gave it to Pam Arciero, who's our director and gave it to Marty to read. And, uh, and that's why elephants, <laughs> so the story is is very simply as a story of I call love, compassion, and elephants. It's a it's a girl um, and an, uh, and a young elephant orphan who uh, end up uh, living in the bush together uh, and trying to survive. Um, she has to uh, escape a, a situation at home, and after her father passes, and uh, and the elephant comes with her, and so and it becomes a sort of great story where she then teams up with a herd of elephants and then she has to rescue them from poachers, um, which is a still a very active uh, issue in Kenya. It's yeah. just part of the- uh, It's a real adventure. I mean, it's a thriller, you know, because they're out there and they're, you know, there's there's lions that, you know, that they have to kind of get escape from and there's snakes and there's, you know, so there's lots of things that, you know, so so it, it doesn't stop moving. Let's put it that way. It's an hour long and it, and it just uh, goes and goes uh, until the climactic ending. It is running March, um, the 27th uh, through April 7th. And some of the shows are school-based shows. So if you are uh, listening to this and you are a part of a school, you can uh, go in and see the show with school groups uh, or you can go to one of the public shows. And Marty, what's been your involvement in Anika's Elephants? Uh, I'm married to Annie. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's my involvement. So it's, so, you know, it's, 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 it's my job to, you know, kind of think of you know what what's the nature of the story? What's what's how is you know how is building puppets best served? Uh, you know what's what's the minimal thing that uh, you know that we need to bring on stage to uh, to tell the story? Uh, I mean, do we need to make fully realized, realistic looking elephants? Uh, the answer to that was a real fast no. It's a memory play. It's a the it starts with the adult Annika uh, talking to the audience and then kind of 
Mm -hmm. She is a storyteller. She's telling the story of her of her past, and then goes into the past. And uh, you know, and, and so I started to think it, uh, memory is a funny thing. I mean, the the things that we remember, uh, the images, the smells, the uh, uh, you know, the the sketches of memory, and you know, especially with with uh, with many years uh, distant, uh, you know, what is it that you remember? So that was my that was my touchstone. Uh, with regards to the design of the play. Martin P. Robinson is the puppeteer and voice of Snuffleupagus and has been for over 40 years now, correct? Right. So I so I actually have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of experience with pachyderm shaped things. My, in my mind, you know, Snuffy is just an offshoot of uh, the mastodons that didn't go extinct, that, uh, that, you know, that developed a certain amount of civilization and, uh, you know, and survived in a, you know, separate from the rest of the world in, a, in an island, island nation. Uh, Called Snuffleupagus. <laughs> no, in, in Hawaii. <laughs> you know, I, I realized right away, yeah, I don't, don't want to build a you know, we've got enough snuffleupaguses in, in the world, you know, me being... I don't know if there's ever enough snuffleupaguses in the world. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, and, and you know, in my tenure as in the part, I've, you know, of course played Snuffy, but I've played his uh, his mom and his dad and his uncle and postman. Anyway, inside Snuffy is, he's, he's made, his structure is made out of rattan. And being inside, you know, for years and years and years now, uh, I see the inside structure, which is really beautiful. It's, you know, it's designed organically and it moves in curves and shapes and, you know, and, and, and uh, it's, it's all these lovely organic shapes inside that, that define his shape and then is covered with, you know, a certain amount of foam and then a certain amount of, uh, of uh, fur. So you don't see the shape. It just, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it's just his, his skeletal structure. But I see it from the inside, and I appreciate it from the inside. So the 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 uh, elephants, elephants for Annika's elephants are designed basically based on what I see from inside Snuffy. Uh, the design ethic on this was all all natural materials, basically wood and twine and rope. But then kind of left the knots and left the uh, uh, mm. the ends of the twine so that it all it looks kind of something that was cobbled together. So I, I leaned into the uh, you know the the rough edges and the uh, uh, you know the, the the memory aspect of it. Yeah. And since a lot of our audience is young people who are interested in media careers and television careers, like what, how did you get your foot in the door? I guess in in each of your respective jobs. Well, fun. Uh, 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 well, I I uh, I had a, a background in. Uh, acting and uh and art when i was in uh in school uh in in high school and i kind of chose uh acting and came to new york and went to acting school and uh but i always you know i i loved to draw and i loved to build things and a certain amount of mechanical things i, I always had a, a background with from my dad who was an engineer um when i when I realized that as an actor, all I could play would be, you know, six foot two affable kid from Wisconsin, which I was not interested in playing. Uh, I, you know, I really liked the, the character roles, which is why I got into acting. Uh, and then when I tried puppetry, I realized, oh my God, I can, I really can play everything. Animals, vegetables, minerals, you know, tiny little worms, big, huge snuffleupaguses, carnivorous plants, you name it. Uh, and that's, what I really love about acting is all those roles. So I really uh, I worked with every every puppet company I could I could find and kind of learned my craft as a as an apprentice with companies and then kind of as a journeyman and and then as a professional. Uh, uh, it's I, I so I I know many different styles of puppetry. I started with marionettes and shadow puppets and uh, um, learned learned. Muppet style kind of by osmosis and then I uh, got an audition for them in uh, in 80 81 and was uh, able it was uh, managed to get hired onto Sesame in into the Snuffleupagus character uh, which was from, from basically kind of from zero to 60 my first show was all singing, all dancing um, in Snuffy all day long that was my first time on camera I took over the role from uh, 
one of the great Muppet greats, uh, uh, Jerry Nelson. Back then, you would just throw a car a, 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 a poor puppeteer into a lead role one show. Um, we don't do that anymore. We did a whole training process, a whole mentorship process, uh, a, a, a years long, um, many years long um, mm -hmm. process to uh, you know to train and bring people along in the in the craft, and then and then work them into into major major characters uh, as we go along. Uh, so one of the one of the things that I've done worked into uh, since becoming a puppeteer with uh, with Jim Henson Productions and with uh, Sesame Street is I do a, a lot of the training uh, for the international productions and for the domestic production. So what was that first day like for you? It was it was uh, it was uh, panic time. Um, you know, I, you know, I had to be good. Uh, I had a whole studio of people um, uh, counting on the new kid. Uh, it was, uh, but I, but Carol Spinney, who who plays Big Bird, that's that's mainly what I remember from that day. He was kind and he was sweet and he was patient, uh, and we worked uh, pretty well together. Even though I think we met that day, hmm. uh, and it worked out just good enough, so I didn't get fired and managed to you know to stay on uh and learn my craft uh as i went along about eight years later i i i, I finally got good at it so you have to make it your own if there's anything that anyone likes about any puppet character or any muppet uh muppet character you know whether it's miss piggy or kermit or big bird or or any any character it's because the puppeteer that is behind that character has a soul and a personality and is bringing that all to bear and is has found a technical way and an emotional way to communicate him or herself into that character to be a good communicator for you. Uh, that's that's the essence of puppetry. So I had to make Snuffy my own very quickly. Started with, with Snuffy and then worked into the other characters into Telly and Slimy and Bust of the Horse and yep, 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 Martians and uh, and everything else that you that you end up doing on set. You were the Martians. I uh, yeah, still, still, am. still am. Oh my gosh, they're my, the best. I'm, I'm writing right something right now. I haven't Martians. given up any characters. <laughs> but have, like, do have they evolved to cell phones? Or are they still using the like black? Bling. No, they're still, no they're still they're still you know for for an advanced lay form they're really idiots they have they, well, they have a pad. they have a little thing that they you know that they type into pad pad but you know they have a sometimes sometimes with, sometimes I'm using them yeah okay sure. great then they then they have <laughs> what what did you prefer imaginary or or non-imaginary he was he was never imaginary he was never imaginary. Uh, yeah, he was. We just, thought he was imaginary. He was always there. The, uh, <laughs> the adults who didn't have the time to actually look at what was right in front of their faces accused Big Bird of having an imaginary friend. You know, simply because he had a friend that was shy, and that was, uh, you know, that, that was, you know, not, not, uh, you know, that they just because they had never seen him didn't mean he didn't exist. And, uh, mm. You know, the adult in all of us that, uh, you know, that is too quick to deny. Um, anyway, so he, he just, Snuffy just had bad timing. Um, <laughs> and it was, it was delightful when he finally became a, a full, full member of the cast when he was outed by Phil Donahue uh, back in uh, 84, 85. All of a sudden, this whole vast opportunity of, of relationships, which is, which is really, the fun part of a character so you you know you you create this you create a character and then where does the character intersect with another character and where you know and what's the fun in that uh you know for instance the telly and baby bear you know they intersected and they became these this great team it was one of my favorite things that i've ever done on sesame street is the relationship between two two you know little guys who just love each other but have all the you know all the rough and tumble relationship that uh that, that kids have um uh, the good things the bad the not so good things the challenges uh that's the fun part of uh of the performing is is in and, and that's how things evolve uh, you tell us about how you got into writing and how how did you go from your interest in it to your career um i uh 
I, I like when I started not wanting to be an actress, so I wanted to be a triple threat. I wanted to be a rockette at one time. <laughs> but uh, but then I went to college and when I was there, I uh, I started doing playwriting and I realized that um, I I felt like I, I was more um, successful at that than, than seeing some of the, you know, the acting that was going on in the school and stuff. And I and I got really into uh, the writing part. And so when I finally, after I graduated, I, I went to LA briefly and wasn't didn't like it there. Um, and so I came back to New York and I just started working in theaters and uh, writing plays. And I spent my first 10 years in New York working at a theater called New York Stage and Film Company. And they were sort of my grad program. Uh, I did a, and I, because I didn't go to grad school, I know that people do go to grad school for playwriting and writing. Um, I just did it, you know, and I just worked the, at the theater and just went to plays every night. And um, I sold a screenplay once for a play I wrote. And then, um, and I said, <laughs> I needed some money. And I met Marty at a, uh, the O'Neill Theater Center uh, doing, he was doing his first adult puppetry play. And I was assigned to him as a dramaturg and, uh, and he needed some dramaturgy. I and, sure did. And so we became friends there. And um, she, we, we, yeah, she was there to uh, to consult. To but I, I just I just threw her into the. Yeah, and the I performed, cat. too, because I had, you know, I used to be a dancer, you know, so I was, I was able to throw in threw me in there. Um, but that's when I said, you know, because I really uh, needed to get, you know, a money job. And I said, how do you get on Sesame Street? And so he said, well, you know, write me some scripts. And I wrote scripts up and I gave them to him and he gave them to the head writer. And then I did a year long training program that was uh, very intense. Uh, and there was like, I think eight of us, we never met, but there was like eight people. Wow. And I was the last one standing. <laughs> the so, last one who would actually put up, put up with, with the abuse of the head writer. <laughs> Wonderful man who, who trained me. And uh, and so uh, so then I got on the show. So then I was in the show for a long, 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 long time. And then was doing training with Marty internationally. Uh, and then we, we, we would go to, to countries, uh, we would go to India. She would work with a whole whole bunch of uh, writers, teaching them the uh, the the process and the kind of the the you know, the the formula for uh, for how you how you write for Sesame. And I was uh, training and hiring the puppeteers, and we brought them all together. We did that a couple of times. Uh, That's one. I know you did it for Plaza Sesamo, right in Mexico. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. also did the South Africa. Um, Kalani. And uh, and then a big one for us was Bangladesh. Yeah, been, been, went there many many times. A lot of time in Bangladesh, Indonesia. Um, with all of your both of your bodies of work being so extensive, so award winning. I mean, the Emmy holding your door open <laughs> is oh, my yeah, favorite yeah. part of your backdrop. It's just always there. <laughs> that's that, sorry. That's Annie's Emmy, <laughs> and Annie has like what thirteen, 13 of those things around. Yeah. I got I got zero. Thanks a lot started to say, okay, you know, I've done, I've done a lot of children's television, you know, what do I want to do now? And that's when I started thinking, I want to get back into theater. And it, and it sort of came to me recently, not, I mean, I, just that, you know, that I really am kind of coming full circle, you know, that I really would like to just keep writing family theater pieces at this point in my life. And, you know, maybe try some other things. Like I, my, I wrote a middle grade fiction book um, and uh, I'm trying to sell and uh is that ghost horse whisperer it's ghost horse whisperer. yeah ghost horse yeah i for whatever reason i think it maybe it's going back to when i wanted to be a vet but most of my uh, ideas that i'm kind of getting for family things are around conservation and uh climate and environment you know and knowing also that that's a good way into a kid's heart is through animals and things so um i have uh, an idea for a show that i think i'll start working on once annika's kind of run its course um, Is that the otter show? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, otters. otters. Yeah, otters. Otters. Otters, otters are whale. best. Yeah. Wasn't there? Like, isn't there a whole like otter family Christmas? Isn't that part of the Henson? Uh, there, there's family? a Henson thing. Uh, that's. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Otters Christmas. 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 The first yeah. big, mm -hmm. uh, wonderful Christmas show that we yeah. that we ever that we did. It's really, yeah. it's really, yeah. it really still holds up. Yeah, I told Marty I also was really interested in whales, and he looked at me like, "I'm not Which, killing whales." I got to build whales, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, the the only the only <laughs> animal on on the planet that's uh, that's bigger than uh, yeah. bigger than all. Maybe, maybe I'll do my. <laughs> I can do it. It's those little uh, little those little naked mole rats. I can do a show of naked mole rats. <laughs> naked mole rats. I will build all the naked mole rats you want, my dear. <laughs> All that information and all that knowledge I got from teaching children on Sesame Street coming together with all my theater background, uh, it, it comes together really, I think, very strongly in Annika's Elephants because it has, it's a very theatrical. Yes. This is this is a real, you know, theatrical event, you know, in the sense of 
how it moves and jumps between time and you know literally she jumps between time it's like this you know she turns her back she turns she becomes mm. another character so uh, it's not something that could be, be anywhere but really on the stage in this format you know uh, please, please please tell us where to go and when to uh, go and, and, and tickets are selling oh they're selling yeah yeah so it's you go on to the new victory and, and where it says ticket sales and annika's elephants and uh, you'll see uh uh, they have a very big, very, very, um, you know, uh, comprehensive website to uh, tell all about how what New Victory is, because it does many, many shows from all over the world uh, it, and they bring them to New York. So uh, it's it's worth looking at. So I love it. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for spending this time with us. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. 